Hello and welcome to Faragadabu. Considering the state of affairs that it finds itself in, how significant can a conversation on nation building in Ethiopia be? Last week, a symposium on specifically that topic, one in a series of course, was held in Bishofto town. Considered a milestone, this convergence of multiple stakeholders is set to produce a roadmap on nation building to be submitted to political actors in the country, including the government. My guest today, Professor Kasam Brahanu, is the chair of the working group that's organizing this series of symposiums. Professor Kasam Brahanu, a very warm welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Over the last three or four years, there has been so much uh, conversation, dialogue, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, on uh, state building and nation building and so on and so forth. The, the argument is that uh, Ethiopia has been into state building for centuries, but the concept and the drive for state, for, for nation building has never been there, or it was uh, full of uh, false starts. Yeah, that, uh, that, that's right. Uh, um, the, the major preoccupation was on state building, so there have been a number of attempts aimed at nation building. Uh, uh, during the <coughs> reigns of uh, various re regimes, uh, political regimes, including uh, the present one, um, the focus was uh, more on, on state building. Uh, but but uh, we, can, we can cite a number of attempts, even from the recent past, uh, if we start, during the reign of uh, imperial rule, uh, a nation building was attempted uh, by way of uh, taking recourse to assimilation. Uh, assimilation, assimilating, uh, meaning uh, in trying to in induce people to, uh, to speak uh, the same language, to profess uh, more or less the same religion, uh, so officially. Um, it is. It is. It is uh, often said uh, the country is for all, and uh, religion is personal. Uh, certain uh, um, values of uh, officialdom were uh, encouraged at the expense of other subaltern uh, values, and so on and so forth. Well. Uh, Considering the intention, it was it was not bad, but uh, the methodology of application uh, became a breeding ground for uh, grievances because uh, of <coughs> the dominant tendency of uh, intolerance towards uh, diversity with which uh, our peoples, our country, uh, are, are, are in doubt. And, and character right. Did it continue to the dark period? No, it did not, actually. Uh, uh, yeah, mm, uh, in, in a way, yes, despite the fact that uh, certain uh, changes have, have taken place due to the ideological orientation that was uh, prevailing at, uh, at the time. For example, uh, an attempt was made to Secularize the state, meaning uh, separate uh, the fusion between state and religion, allowing <coughs> for uh, uh, some space in terms of language diversity, so on and so forth. Nonetheless, uh, primacy was accorded to to subscribing to the dominant ideology of the day. Uh, so that was supposed to be the unifying vac factor, but that's it right. wasn't, that's what you're yeah. alluding to, right? That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. And, and we, we find ourselves in, in, in the, uh, what for the last 25 years, a different regime, right? And yeah. again, another attempt at, st at nation building, right? Uh, yeah, um, for example, uh, the federal arrangement that uh, unfolded since the last uh, 25 years uh, at uh, the official and formal level um, and certain 
<coughs> socio-economic and political reforms that have been introduced uh, were indirectly aimed at fostering some kind of nation uh, building by recognizing uh, diversity uh, which do not presuppose uh, necessarily exclusivism uh, but we can say that again uh, uh, this has culminated in a situation that uh, has uh, considerably moved forward in terms of uh, nation building. So when you talk about nation building, you're basically subscribing to the notion of collective identity, right? The experiences from other countries, including from our own Africa. Uh, suggests that there is no singular way to achieve in some kind of, uh, of, of, of uh, uh, nation building uh, or, or whatever, you know. It's, it's a process, but at the same time, there are different ways. That's of right. Um, uh, the thing is that uh, uh, forging a sense of common belonging by building on what is commonly shared between uh, different peoples and cultures. Um, I think that we have that in sufficient amount. Let's explore that. W w what do you mean by that? What, what, is, what is it that we share? Well, well in, uh, in the long years of coexistence, uh, the peoples of Ethiopia have intermingled, uh, intermingled in the sense of cultural exchange, intermarriage, uh, settlements, relocations. Um, uh, adapting of the values, uh, beliefs of some by others, so on and so forth. So this could have uh, been used to uh, build on this without denying that there are also uh, differences, diversities that need to be recognized. And, and for some, actually, historical injustices that far outweigh the commonalities that you've suggested earlier on. The problem with the past, uh, the narratives of the past, particularly as uh, espoused by uh, some quarters, is that uh, over uh, emphasis, emphasis on 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 uh, differences uh, on on the one hand, mm -hmm. and on the part of others, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, we have been one. Uh, despite some differences here and there, uh, both of which may appear to be uh, off of mark. Uh, so uh, striking the correct p balance up to now proved to be an uphill stride uh, because different dispositions that are espoused by uh, different groups and, and, and uh, entrepreneurs, uh, social, uh, political uh, Entrepreneurs. So, do we have an Ethiopian identity? Is that a new concept or is something that could be realized, do you think? I, I would say we have some elements of Ethiopian identity. One of uh, the markers of Ethiopian identity, despite the differences, animo animosities, polarizations that we have been uh, experiencing and still experiencing, is that one one uh, major trait of Ethiopian identity is that when uh, there is a big stake, like uh, preserving the integrity and the national independence of the nation, we we often converge, and this is why we have there is no other secret that we have. Uh, managed to exist for us as uh, indep independent people, uh, maintained an independent country for millennia. Of course, we send away uh, the encroachers, the invaders, and then we continue to... And with that goes that, that, that element of Ethiopian identity. Yeah, I can. Up, un up until up until another incursion comes into the picture. Yeah, I can. I can take this but as one one defining feature of the disposition of Ethiopians. But the, these are t temporarily unifying factors. They are perpetual. That's true. That's, yeah. true. That's true.
And you cannot build a nation. You cannot build a nation based on this, right? Can you? No, not only on. You need much more than that. You, you need much more. And what are those you think, in your opinion? But then you 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 bring into the fore uh, the issue of <coughs> trying to uh, forge some kind of cohesion, not only against uh, foreign invaders or against uh, this and that. That. Uh, uh, we should, we should, we should. There are a number of things on which we still need to work uh, hard. Uh, the question of equ equity, the question of uh, did we convince all our people, including the so called traditionally privileged, so on and so forth, to say that this is our, our country, this is our flag, this is our government, this is our constitution? We did not manage to do that. Because, by and large, we have uh, what what has been taking place was to to impose some uh, values, some dispositions by, by force without persuading. The question of equity, the question of uh, you know uh, uh, nurturing a sense of belonging. Uh, seriously, despite despite uh, diversities, despite uh, disaffections, despite this and that, so uh, we need to work hard on in that direction, and this is what uh, prompted us. The, the, the seminar that you organized last week in Bishop to oh. I mean, it was about the concept of yeah. nation building and so on and so forth, experiences from other countries. That's right. Let me state uh, something very briefly about the background of uh, this uh, project and this symposium that we have uh, uh, conducted last week in uh, Bishoftu. Uh, all um, or many Ethiopians have been concerned with uh, events and uh, occurrences that have begun unfolding since the last uh, three, four years in some parts of the country. Uh, uh, including including the government, uh, non-state actors, uh, individual citizens were were concerned. Where are we heading to? What uh, what is the reason that uh, we find ourselves in such state of affairs? Uh, so very few of us thought that one of the reasons, not not the only reason, is that we have not made a serious attempt aimed at nation building. This is why uh, even small issues can be points of divergence, uh, polarization and uh, disjuncture. So we, we began in, uh, to, to, to exchange informally. So we began to question ourselves as individuals who have been exposed to some kind of uh, modern education and this and what were you doing about this yeah well, are, are we sitting by by claiming that we have not created the problem we did not uh, we do not, uh, not have any share we did not contribute to this and can can uh, history and future generations uh, absolve us by saying that oh uh, kasam did not create uh, this problem he's not part of it uh, uh, the Farah did not do this, and therefore he cannot be blamed, uh, because our people, our future generations, and history can question us uh, because of our sin of omission or uh, some kind of conspiracy of uh, silence. So we say, uh, let's 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 try to to put together our, our ideas on paper and uh, uh, try it without having any illusion that the success of this project will solve all problems that are prevailing in this country. But it would be a good start and that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you sat down and then... We sat down and uh, began to approach uh, uh, some people. We said, let's let's go ahead, and then uh, how can we operationalize this? How can we concretize this? And therefore, we went to the Ethiopian uh, Foreign Relations Strategic Studies Institute. Uh, the head and uh, the staff uh, were uh, highly receptive of this idea. 
Then we wanted to bring on board uh, some some international partners. Uh, we approached the uh, International Institute uh, for uh, electoral uh, assistance idea, uh, the Africa the Africa Bureau. Incidentally, we are head headhunting for for persons that are responsible that can share our views uh, on this. Uh, uh, because of our familiarity with them, because of our easy access to them. Then uh, uh, we approached a Norway-based uh, firm that is headed by uh, a person who, uh, who knows Ethiopia, who is a friend of Ethiopia, who has grown up here. So we began making formal meetings and exchange uh, on, the, on this project. So you had a very interesting discussion for, you know, yeah. that ran for two days, two days and a half. Yeah. And but uh, before that, we, we put down uh, what uh, we, we are uh, thinking of doing yeah. by way of uh, drafting a concept note, which yeah. is improved over time. Then we said, how do we operationalize this? Oh. Uh, so we wanted to reach out to government through the institute. We wanted, uh, we're aware that uh, uh, we want finance. So we approached uh, a Norway-based uh, firm and uh, idea to mobilize funds for uh, this. Uh, we went to the head of the institute to liaise us with uh, concerned government agencies. So we came up with uh, about three, four milestones uh, that uh, would be addressed and uh, milestone one on concepts theories. We didn't want to make it an exclusive academic exercise, but we wanted stakeholders that are to participate in the symposia. Uh, to Which included the government, religious uh, institutions, religious civil society organizations, and, and parties, opposition party political. Private sector, uh, mass based. Uh, associations, so on and so forth. So it wasn't an academic uh, no. debate or discussion, it was based on some empirical whatever, right? Yeah, we wanted this as a, an entry point. Then we wanted to bring into focus uh, regional and uh, international experiences in nation building. Do you think you've successfully done that in the conversation that you had for two days and a half? Yes. So you have explored Africa, you know, Asian experiences yeah. from other countries, yeah. Europe as well. That's right. So your first uh, seminar uh, symposium is meant to to crystallize the whole concept of nation building yeah. based on the experiences of other countries. That's right. And then you're going to have the second phase, right? As I understand That's it, right. and it's going to be a much bigger one, right? Yeah. And, and then what then what are you going to be? I mean, you just cannot. You just yeah. And the most important one. Yeah. What What do you intend? We intend to do now that people have an idea what nation building is and all that stuff, and yeah. that you are readily available to go ahead yeah. and forge ahead and yeah. and, and what are the prospects for nation building in Ethiopia? And this is what you're going to to debate in the next edition right. of right. the symposium. Right. So, what is it going to look like? Now, for for all milestones, we have, from the very start, we have identified resource persons, international Ethiopians, uh, people of uh, uh, Ethiopian origin, uh, living abroad, and probably have taken up as a, as a, on the basis of their track record, particularly of uh, researching um, some kind of practicing in, 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 in these areas. So once the list is drawn, then we reached out to them. Is it inc inclusive enough for all intents and purposes? Probably not, but uh, for the purpose at hand, we felt that this would be uh, okay. Uh, so the third milestone, now the first is a concept as a theoretical entry point, so the second uh, regional and international experience. The third, which we are uh, hoping to hold in the coming four or five weeks would be on Ethiopia. Then what opportunities do we have to do that? Of course we have assets and opportunities that have been built over time. We can uh, can we build on them? What are the challenges? Uh, 
what are the constraints. And then, most importantly, we want to go to a fourth milestone, which is drawing, drafting a, a, a roadmap. A roadmap of, of nation building, right? Yeah. And who would be the consumer of this roadmap? What we intend is that uh, we are in the process of uh, purposefully inviting uh, representatives of groups, citizens that we consider our stakeholders. In general terms, the whole of the, Ethiop uh, the entire Ethiopian people are stakeholders. The other stakeholder is the government. So drawing on the discussions, uh, the exposures that have been made in, in the different symposia, uh, then a roadmap would, and what roadmap, okay. So we want to bring in uh, policy makers, top level uh, policy makers, uh, regional, federal. Political parties of various Political persuasions. Uh, religious groups, cultural groups, the private sector, academia, the research com members of the research community. And it will be the roadmap for nation building in Ethiopia. Yeah. So, so this will be submitted to the government after it is finalized. So when do you want, when do you intend to achieve that? In the next, what, one year or? Uh, probably less, yes. much less. Yeah. So we should not be over ambitious. We should uh, check its feasibility. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we, we are looking forward that the government would be supportive of, of uh, this. And once it has accepted, um, adjusted it to its own um, priorities, uh, then it will uh, enact a comprehensive policy that would guide subsequent actions of every stakeholder in the country. So we are uh, hoping that it's a big project, yeah. in, in this little way we should contribute well, partly as uh, citizens and partly to escape uh, the negative verdict of uh, our future generations and history. Well, Professor Gassal, good luck and thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. <laughs>